Hi, this is Paul Francis and welcome to the very first video for the Certified Information Systems Auditor Review course that I will be conducting for, for the rest of you guys. So this will be just an introduction of the exam itself and the certification and, and I hope you will learn something from it. So, okay, to start, maybe I will just give a brief outline of what will this video be about. So basically the first one, so I'll be talking about myself, hopefully I will not get overboard with that one. And it was just a quick one and then give a course overview of the whole course and what will be the how will be the schedule of the videos will be like and then I will talk about the exam itself and why you should take it and then we'll go right straight ahead to the job practice areas that are involved with the CISA, uh, CISA exam all right about me so basically I passed the CISA exams in March 2018 basically that's last year and I actually got a score of 693 or something like that which is actually the highest score for the February and May 28 in batch here, just here in the ASACA Manila chapter, but still. <laughs> I'm actually a, an accountancy graduate. I actually passed the CPA board exam in October 2006. Actually, that's why I took up uh, the professional science masters in cybersecurity as well, because I'm more inclined with computers. I don't really enjoy working and bookkeeping and doing accounting stuff anyway. So anyway, so I actually also passed the CISM and C, uh, serious exams all from the same from ISACA as well. And yeah, we will talk about that later on other ser video series. Maybe I will be also creating a video series for CISM and series in the future, hopefully. And also, I am currently working as a systems administrator for a multinational company here in the Philippines. And I, the company is actually all over the world. So basically, I've been there for now going nine years now. So yeah. And to move forward to the course overview. So just talk about how this uh, course will be conducted. So basically, I'll be creating modular videos, basically per topic. Hopefully, there will be a video per task statement of a job practice area. And maybe you combine those that are actually can be put together. I mean, they are actually covering many task statements of the job practice areas of the CISA exam. And yeah. Uh, the next video will probably be on the domain one information system auditing process already and then possibly a Q&A video if there are actually uh, questions that you want me to answer basically you can comment down below if you want to clarify anything so hopefully I can reply back if not then maybe I can just put up a video to answer your questions yes and about the exam, so first we'll talk about the reg registering for the exam. So ISACA members actually pay $575 and for non-members it should be $760. And this is just for the exam, just one big exam. And from time to time, ISACA actually gives $50 discount. So watch out for that for if you want to register. I think um, before when the... Uh, exams are actually by batch when, when uh, they give discounts on the first uh, basically before the start of the uh, of the batch and then yeah, at the end at the tail end so they, they give, give those discounts as well but now actually I think now they are actually doing a continuous registration uh, which you can actually schedule now uh, anytime and then you can take the exam for the eight hours after being so actually that will be uh, a great thing to do now so that you can schedule anytime you want and then you can take it at uh, 48 hours from now so yeah it's an online registration and scheduling so i suggest you schedule it forward and pay it so that you will actually uh, give accountability to yourself to yourself and actually take it uh, uh if not you will just uh, procrastinate and prolong the agony and just and 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 you will not just you will not just register if you have actually have a deadline uh, you will actually work hard for it and then actually take the exam. So the exam is actually computer-based at the PSI test site all over the world. Here in the Philippines, I believe there, there's one in um, Cubao, uh, no, at Quezon City. Uh, and the other, uh, there are other two test sites in Makati. So I took one, I took the CISA exam in Makati, which is um, good. And the CISM also in Makati, but then the traffic uh, and I, uh, the traffic so that's why I took the the last one the serious exam in Quezon City basically they are just the same uh, it's in a cubicle and uh, you will be locked there so you 
there will be a video surveillance as well and you will have a uh, an off-site proctor looking after you and there will be recordings as well and your uh, microphone is open so you cannot actually do anything there so it will, uh, actually it's a good thing that they actually do just to, to give uh, credibility to the exam so yes we talk about continuous registrations and also uh, there's a 12 month eligibility period to take the exam after registration so if you uh, register today and you can actually decide for one year before you take it so i think that that's enough time for you to take the exam so you can schedule it in time and 48 hour, hours prior yes and more about the actual exam so the actual exam has 150 multiple choice questions with four choices four difficult choices and this um most often than not these four choices are actually all correct but you have to look for the best answer among those choices so you have four hours or 240 minutes to complete so basically that's one hour and 30 minutes or something like that uh, to complete one question and i believe you have you will have enough time to finish it uh i finished the first uh pass uh, basically taking all 150 questions uh, answering them first uh, on the first try i took about an hour and 30 minutes for that one and then I reviewed them again, and after two hours, uh, I think three hours, I was able to complete the exam. So you, I think you will have enough time to actually answer those ones. Uh, Isaka uses standard report scores on a common scale of from 200 to 800. So um, there are actually different weights on ex uh, on the exam's questions, I believe, and there are actually uh, some. Uh, practice questions or research questions there that are not actually included on the total like total score uh, they are just there to actually uh, uh, to gauge if that question is actually questionable on an exam and you need actually to 450 or higher to pass the exam so that's about 56 to 7 percent and but actually if there's a different weighing scale uh, a different weight on every question so um, as a rule of thumb on your practice exam i believe you need to target 85 percent to actually give you more enough confidence that you will pass the exam so after taking the exam you will actually see a preliminary result saying if you preliminary pass or if preliminary fail I, i'm not sure if those uh, results can change i've been searching online before uh, when I first took the CISA exam, because I only get a preliminary pass, I researched online if anyone uh, received that and then uh, get an official fail score after. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So uh, I think they were just uh, doing that to weigh, uh, to get your actual score because of those scales. And an official score, you will be emailed within 10 days. Actually, now you can check your my isaka the, for the results as well but uh yeah i it's actually exactly 10 days for me for all the three exams so yeah 10 days not within it's in the 10th day <laughs> it's so if you fail uh you will be given 30 days to rest first before you can register again and pay again if you uh, want to take the exam back so more information on this you can actually download a pdf file on the isaka website the certification exams candidate guide so there are, you actually actually need to read that one because it, it contains a lot of information that you uh, that will actually help you pass the exam maybe not on the knowledge side but on the uh, not on the CISA material side but on the on the specific guidelines that you will need and so also if you want to learn more about the CISA exam course of course you have to read that uh, PDF file, which is a quick read, basically. So, yeah. So, more information on why you should take the exam, other than I believe you actually know why you're taking this exam. Sometimes it's required by employers. Uh, but, like for me, it's actually a self sponsored one. So, an employer did not actually give me as, uh, money to actually take this exam. I just took it myself because I believe it would actually give me a competitive edge. Um, if I'm actually I'm actually on this career uh, changing journey and as uh, I, I have to get as many credentials as possible that's why I took this one um, 
and since I am actually a CPA, I actually see this one, um, not arrogantly, but actually a low hanging fruit that I have to take now. That's why I took this one just in case it's there. So yes, it actually give you a competitive edge, uh, for of course, and you achieve a high professional standard because ISACA is actually a very credible and very high standard uh, organization, and it's all over the world. And yeah, so uh, it confirms your knowledge and experience because uh, for the CISA certification, you need to pass the exam, of course, that confirms your knowledge and experience, of course. Uh, you need actually to have five exper uh, five years experience to actually get the certification exam. And it's global recognition as well. It's globally, uh, uh, ITAGA is a global organization. So yeah, uh, the what the CISA standards in uh, all over the world are, are the same. And of course, for the organization sponsors their employees, it will actually increase the value in the organization because I believe here in uh, the Philippines, uh, the consulting firms are actually uh, are competing on how many CISA people they have or things like that. So, yeah, increase value in the organization. So, to give a brief overview of the job practice areas for the 2019 CISA certification, by domain, as you can see here from the graph, Domain 1 has 21%, which is actually the same with the 2016 uh, job practice areas. Uh, domain 2 is 17%, Domain 3 is 12%, Domain 4 is 23%, and Domain 5 is 27%. So 150 questions, you multiply it by the percentage, you get the amount of questions that will be uh, appearing on your exams based on the percentage of that each domain. So uh, based from this one, the last year, the domain five has only 25% day, uh, which is the domain five is protection of information assets. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, we know that the importance of actually protecting your information assets now is getting, getting more and more important each day. So that's why they increase the percentage uh, for that practice domain now. And so here are the actual uh, description for each domain. So domain one is information system auditing process, which actually include the planning and the code of ethics and things like that. And we will talk about more on that on the upcoming videos as well. So it's 21%. And for domain two is governance and management of IT. So basically uh, every, um, the, audit, uh, the management of IT should come from the top, of course. So that's why you can have uh, a management commitment and it will go well as planned so that's that's what governance is all about uh, so that's 70 percent and then domain three which is the slowest one is 12 percent information systems acquisition development and implementation and domain four will be for the information systems operations and business resilience basically this business continuity and things like that um and for domain five protection information assets so more um, this is more on the controls that you have to implement uh, to protect your information assets. This is 27%, this is the largest one. So, yeah, I think you need to spend more time on this. Okay, so that basically wrap, wraps up our very first video on the CISA review course. And coming up next will be how to pass the CISA exam. Uh, what the things I did actually on how to pass this exam, and maybe it will help you as well. Uh, if you're tight on a budget, more importantly. And of course, the slides will be available on my website. I will post the link below and you can also see it, paulfrancis.org. And please subscribe, of course. You can click that and click on the bell button as well so that you can actually spread the word for this free course and help everyone who is actually planning to take on the CISA exam. Um, oh, and before I forget, you can comment down below if you have any reaction to this video if you have any questions violent reactions whatever i will take it <laughs> uh, feedback uh, is always good for us so you, you need to take it uh, seriously or not maybe whatever so also i will be uploading the next video hopefully on thursday so basically uh, i will be posting videos every tuesdays and thursdays so yeah please subscribe thank you bye